Dr. Jaffe, can you explain uh, a little bit more about hypermethylation? What are the symptoms? What should a clinician look for? And how would you recommend uh, preventing overmethylation? Yes, hypermethylation, I predict, is going to become a, an important area in clinical medicine. It has been an important area in research and in academic medicine for years, maybe even decades. Uh, and the importance is the following. Uh, when the body translates the DNA, when it transcribes the RNA, when it makes proteins, when it moves proteins around, the way in which it does that process, the synthesis and the folding and the moving around, is by either adding or subtracting methyl groups. It turns out more methyl groups make you more water soluble, more easily movable. And if you take methyl groups off, you put something in place, such as a collagen or elastin molecule or something that has worn out and you're replacing it. Methylation is very far upstream. And since it's such a fundamental cellular uh, component of metabolism, the way to understand the balance is to measure in detail. This is usually done on a combination of plasma and 24-hour urine. You collect a 24-hour urine, and in that urine you look at uh, all of the uh, amino acids, uh, you look at uh, minerals, uh, unprovoked, this is not the D-penicillin provocation now, this is unprovoked looking for uh, potassium, magnesium, and zinc deficiency, uh, looking for copper uh, and or calcium uh, X, um, because, well, methylation has to do with methyl groups. In order to methylate, you need these other enzymatic activation cofactors. So methylation is fundamental to cell biology. And yet, when a clinician says to me, how does a person look? How do they present clinically with a hypermethylation syndrome? I'm telling you it's hard to know without testing. But if you do test, if you do plasma amino acids and urine amino acids, you do plasma minerals and urine minerals, and then you talk to someone like myself who understands that, um, that metabolic relationships, because it's always a proportion, it's always sodium to potassium, copper to zinc, uh, magnesium to calcium, uh, so it's always looking at the balance or imbalance. Hypermethylation means you have artifactually, usually through supplementation and supplementation with methylcobalamin, you have driven up the methionine that causes hypermethylation, too much methylation, making things too soluble and leaky. Too soluble, not good. Too insoluble, not good. Just right, yes. And just right means physiology, physiologic forms of supplementation, and specifically hydroxocobalamin as nature's physiologic and preferred, along with natural folates and a full B complex. Now in that situation, you cannot hypermethylate. You can only induce hypermethylation by supplementing with methylcobalamin or potentially acetylcobalamin. So I do recommend the physiologic form, the preferred hydroxylcobalamin form. You cannot induce hypermethylation no matter how much of that you take. If you take too much, you will end up with a, a, a bit more B12 uh, in your sweat, in your stool, in your urine. Uh, some people say that, that uh, mosquitoes do not like it when people have a lot of B12 and or thiamine. Uh, there is a photo somewhere of Beatrice Trum Hunter and myself uh, because we take in lots of those forms of nutrients. And the two people on either side of us have lots of mosquitoes on them, and we barely have any. So for some people, uh, taking enough B-complex, including hydroxylcobalamin, uh, is, uh, is helpful uh, when you go outside if you don't want to be bitten by mosquitoes. And most of us don't like to be bitten by mosquitoes. Um, and so the way to manage hypermethylation is to know that the a methylcobalamin form induces hypermethylation, can convert metallic mercury to methylmercury, can drive up the methionine and artificially drive down the homocysteine. But that imbalances this critical 
movement aspect of biology. Methylation is what is necessary to translate and transcribe uh, the DNA and the RNA, and then to fold the protein properly so it does its job properly, and then it has to be moved around. And the movement has to do with adding or subtracting methyl groups. So it's very important to keep the healthy balance of methylation, which you do with hydroxocobalamin and other natural B-complex factors, um, in contrast to methyl uh, or, or methyl uh, cobalamin, the pre-methylated form that can induce hypermethylation. So the answer to the problem of hypermethylation is use the physiologic hydroxocobalamin. And if you want um, further documentation, uh, you can look at all the amino acids and minerals in the plasma and the urine. And I'd be happy to work with you and any of our staff uh, can help uh, in an individual case uh, interpret such results.